Hello and welcome UConn Nation. I am Maggie Bascom, Associate Director for the UConn Foundation, and my colleagues Deb Crary, Jess Sokol, and I are thrilled to, to have you with us tonight. Launched in the fall of 2020, our plant-based living series is one of the most popular programs UConn alumni offers virtually. If you are new to the series and haven't had a chance to join us at one of our previous events, that's okay. With tonight's recording, we'll also link to those events as well. A quick housekeeping note, you're welcome to cook along with us or cook at a later date. In an effort to stay on schedule and not disrupt the flow, audience questions and comments submitted through the chat will be monitored and answered by UConn staff. It's now my pleasure to introduce our dynamic hosts for this evening, Robin and Jeffrey Selvin. Thank you and so sister, much. <laughs> as sister and brother duo, Robin and Jeffrey are managing partners of Marsha Selvin Catering a leading culinary and event firm with locations in Stanford, Connecticut, and New York City. And without further delay, we'll turn the program over to our host for Cooking Plant-Based for the Holidays. Thank you so Hi. much. Thank you, thank you. And we're thrilled to be here tonight with you, producing some of the most amazing vegan items tonight that Robin has produced. She's our executive chef and my sister and business partner here. Um, but she's also the world behind everything that we eat. I handle a lot of what we drink. So I'm going to be making some cocktails tonight. But um, again, we're so honored and thankful that you uh, selected us tonight for this presentation. And we are, because this isn't really an interactive back and forth, you can certainly, um, if you have questions along the way, um, feel free to ask. Um, but we will be just presenting as if it's, this is like Julia Child and Jacques Pepin. I need a to class you. of something if I'm yeah. Julia Child. <laughs> um, can we get started? Yes. All you, right, let's do this, you everybody. Start. So we're going to start with the vegan crab cakes to, to begin, because at some point throughout this process, we have to take the mixture that we make and put it into the freezer. So I want to get going with that first, and then We'll switch over to a cocktail just to give you a heads up and then we'll come back to me. We'll finish the crab cakes and then make the, the grilled corn salsa. So let's get cooking. What I'm going to need everybody to do is pull out their, um, their ingredients for the crab cakes. I have all of mine here. I don't want to go too fast, but the first thing that we're going to need to work on is our, um, our chickpeas and our hearts of palm, because that's what the meat of the vegan crab cake is basically made out of. It's got that bite of the crab that comes from the, um, the hearts of palm. You're not even gonna believe when you taste these, you're gonna think, oh my goodness, is this really not crab? Anyway, so if you're doing this by hand, start chopping, but I'm gonna be doing this in a, in a mixer here, in a food processor. So I'm gonna take my hearts of palm, throw it into the food mixer, and I'm gonna do the same with my, um, with my chickpeas. And basically what I'm going to what I'm going to be explaining here is you don't want to pulverize these, right? You really want to make sure that you just give them a good rough chop because you want to have that body. Otherwise these are going to be really mushy. So let's give it like a quick So I'm kind of right now like just trying to pulse it because again, I, I definitely do not want to have some mush here. So what you may have to do, which in my case, I'm going to have to do now is you need to scrape down your sides because sometimes the, um, because the chickpeas are smaller and the um, hearts of palm are these like long shafts here. I'm not being fresh, but you know, um, we want to make sure that they get nice and chopped and mixed. I'm going to show you my mixture here. So if you can see, this is sort of like the feeling I'm going for, but I'm going to give it one more whirl here. So I really want to make sure that it's got consistency throughout the entire thing. So we're going to pulse a little more. Again, this is the meat of our vegan crab cake. Okay. So we're good. Now what we're going to do, and this is the coolest thing ever. The liquid that I asked you to save from your um, chickpeas is something that we call aquafaba. In vegan cooking, what's so cool about this is I can whip this up to almost an egg white consistency to give it that kind of thick creaminess that you're gonna look for. So we're gonna take that with our mixing bowl and I'm gonna start with four tablespoons of the aquafaba. So we just measure that out, one, two, 
everybody count with me three <laughs> and four little of mine just spilled out okay so i'll give this to jeffrey because he's going to show you a trick with this later for your beverages now what i'm going to want you to do here is i'm going to just want you to get whisking because you want to get this to start to have air in it so that it whips up really like an egg white almost like a meringue and you're going to see it starts to actually do that and this is instead of going to the gym tonight you're going to just whisk until your arm starts to burn and then keep on whisking <laughs> what does it taste like Actually, it doesn't even have a taste, it which like is kind of weird. It doesn't taste like chickpeas. It's just sort of, it's just sort of like, taste it. It's like salty. It's like, it's pretty neutral. So we're going to keep on whisking. I really want to get it so that it looks nice and kind of creamy. I don't know about you guys, but my arm is starting to burn. I'm hoping that you're developing the foaminess that I have in my bowl here. That looks kind of good. So I think I'm gonna go for it. Give you guys a little bit of time to keep whisking before I move on because I don't wanna, in case I was whisking faster than anybody else. Um, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the vegan mayonnaise. I find that this is so interesting because it really tastes like mayonnaise to me. I can't even believe that they were able to figure this out. I mean, the things that we do with um, making cheeses and such when we're, when we're working in our, our vegan naked fig kitchen, speaking of, I'm going to just do a shameless little plug. Matthew Kenny is one of the top vegan chefs in the world. He has restaurants all over the world and we have a partnership with him and our company is called Naked Fig Catering. And we do all of the, all of his vegan catering through that brand. You can check us out on Instagram or on our website. It's pretty cool. Okay, so now we're gonna add a quarter cup of the vegan mayonnaise in here. And what is vegan mayonnaise? What's in that? Jeffrey, is it? hold on a second. Okay. Let me just see. It looks, it looks exactly like mayo, let's just taste. Hmm? Tastes just like mayo, yum. I know, right? Yum. It's soybean, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So we've got our vegan mayonnaise in with our aquafaba now. And we're going to whisk again. Where's my? Oh, actually, we don't need to whisk. We can fold. So we're going to fold that together. So basically, you don't want to break down your the foam of your aquafaba, but you do want to start to incorporate this into the mixture, OK? So it's nice and creamy here. Hoping that this is the texture that you all have. This is kind of the glue. It's almost like the egg that's going to hold our vegan crab cake together. It's pretty delicious. Um, we're going to start to add um, our lemon juice. Let's do a tablespoon of lemon juice. So one trick that I love to get um, the juice kind of going in a lemon is I roll the lemon on my counter or on a cutting board, it sort of breaks up the segments in the lemon and it gets the juice really easy. Um, gets it coming out easily. Where is my? All right, so I don't typically measure, but I'm doing this for you. So we've got, I'm gonna squeeze my fresh lemon juice here to get exactly my tablespoon. You'll notice that some of my seeds came out. I'm just going to pick those out really quick. Because that would not be something I'd want to bite into. I don't know about you guys. It's one of my pet peeves when I go to a restaurant and they leave this, the pits in my lemon. <laughs> All right, so we're going to mix that in again. Also slowly incorporating, but not mixing too hard. Because again, we don't want to break down that aquafaba because you see how nice and creamy and airy this is. I want to keep that consistency. Okay. Now we're going to go with our dry seasonings. We have garlic powder. We need a teaspoon of garlic powder. Take my measuring spoon. And even that out. Add my garlic powder in. 
when you go for our old base seasoning, or if you've got a different kind of um, seafood seasoning, that's fine as well. They're pretty much the same. Add that in. Okay, so now we've got our dry ingredients. I'm gonna mix this all together again. So just, so you're gonna start to see this. It's really starting to look like this is our egg mixture that's gonna hold the crab together. Pretty cool. Okay. I feel like Old Bay in anything is gonna make it feel like crab cake crab or cake, seafood right? or that kind of you Yeah, know, it's so delicious. All right, let me move this away. Love I'm a bay. very clean chef. Now we're gonna add our Worcestershire sauce. I believe it's a tablespoon. Let me just double check. Um, where am I? One and a half teaspoons. So got my teaspoon measure here. Got my Worcestershire, that's one and a half. I love the smell of Worcestershire sauce. It smells so good. It's got that like, I feel like, I know we're doing vegan here, but I feel like a good steak needs to be marinated in that. <laughs> okay, again, I'm hoping that everybody still has that really great body in their mixture here because mine is nice and fluffy still. All right, now we're gonna add in um, our, our meat to this crab cake, which is our um, chickpea and, here we go, hold on one second. Chickpea and hearts of palm mixture is gonna go right in here now. So to me, it looks kind of like if you ever had that artichoke dip or you have like the chopped up artichoke and all that, that has that same look and texture to it. Well, the thing that's amazing is, you know, when you're looking at chickpeas, I mean, think about, think about hummus, right? Like hummus gets really creamy without even adding anything to it. That's because you've got the body mm -hmm. of, the, of the creamy chickpeas that are going into it. I'm gonna leave this here because I don't want to break this down yet because for next we're gonna add our, our scallions and our parsley. One little thing I wanna show you. I asked you all to, to wash your parsley. Um, any herbs that I wash, I really wanna make sure I dry them. And then I put them, I wrap them in a paper towel and put them in a Ziploc. This will keep your herbs super fresh in the refrigerator. And I recommend that you do this at home. So, okay. So for the parsley, we've got a tablespoon of parsley. Now, listen, we don't have to be all official here with the tablespoons and stuff. We can just like grab a small handful of this, of the parsley. And I'm gonna show you, we're gonna just take the leaves off like this. <clears throat> See, super easy. I mean, normally if I'm cooking and I'm making like a soup or something, I'm okay to have the stalks in because they really taste very delicious and it has the flavor of the parsley. But for this, I'm just gonna do work on the leaves, okay? So I have a nice handful of the leaves. Get out my chef's knife and we're just gonna give these a nice rough chop, okay? So I'll slow down because I have a feeling that Robin, two, two questions for you. Um, yeah. Could you use cream of tartar instead of vegan mayonnaise? I got to be honest, I have not made these with cream of tartar instead of the vegan mayonnaise. Um, that is a thickening agent, obviously. I, I'm not really sure how they'll come out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you really need, I think what you're getting from the vegan mayonnaise is you're getting a creamy base that's gonna hold this all together. And I'm just concerned that with something that's a dry ingredient, we may not have that. However, if you maybe double your aquafaba instead and then use the cream of tartar, that could be an option because if you just make more of that like whipped egg white feeling with the aquafaba, then you have more of that creaminess, you know, to substitute instead of the vegan mayonnaise. Perfect. I'm going, I'm going nice. Does that answer your question, I hope? It does. Um, two, uh, two questions. Sure. Um, what could you use instead of Worcestershire sauce? And secondly, what kind of uh, food processor do you recommend or what brand? 
I mean, I love, I'm, I'm old school, KitchenAid or Cuisinart. I, I, those are my two go-tos. I'm using something here that's called a Roboku, which is a commercial um, grade that's meant to be doing this all day long. And it lasts, you know, in a commercial kitchen. So, you know, that's why I'm not even bringing it on camera to show you. But at home, I personally have a KitchenAid. And prior to that, I had a Cuisinart only because I did a really awesome job. Um, we were hired by KitchenAid to do a whole thing with them. And they gave us um, a bunch of equipment and I really loved the, um, the food processor that they gave me. So that's what I still have. Um, but they're both equally wonderful. Um, okay. So I'm hoping I gave everybody enough time. I, I did my slow slice and dice, um, for my parsley and now I'm going to just add this in. Okay. A little bit slower. Okay. I'm going to still I'm going to have one question about the Worcestershire sauce. Is there anything we could use? Oh, sorry. I didn't answer that. Um, well, you know, you could change the flavor around here. We could use soy sauce, which I think would be really delicious. And then you've got a whole Asian flair going and you could add ground ginger instead of the ground garlic or in addition to, which would, would totally change the flavor. You could add sesame seeds to the panko crumbs when we crust it. That would be like a whole other level. And then instead of a corn salad, we could do something with like Napa cabbage and like create like a really delicious slaw that has like toasted peanuts. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm just throwing ideas out at you, but this is basically a base that you could work upon and change the flavor profile entirely. We could switch it to, to Latin and throw cilantro in it. And, you know, I mean, we could go a whole other route, really. So the other thing is, I think, and I use it at home a lot. I don't even know what, what it's made of, but coconut aminos are another kind of liquid almost like a soy sauce or a tabasco you know or a worcestershire so i know a lot of people like that you know yeah for and sure not as salty it's not quite as salty as soy sauce yep okay is everybody okay if we move on to to our spring onions to our scallions now yes okay so i asked you to wash your scallions so this is what they should look like you're going to cut the little end off a little furry end because obviously we don't want that in there now, in the case where mine are really large, I'm not going to want really big pieces of these. So one thing that I recommend is you're going to slice down the center of, of them carefully so that you have smaller pieces that we're going to cut into our crab cakes so that it's going to look like this. Got it? And now slowly, want, want to see a chef -y trick, like a knife trick? You know how we cut with our hands like this? The reason that we do is we press, I don't know if you can see this, but we press the knife against our knuckles so that we can't cut ourselves because you create this sort of pressure here, if I'm explaining that right. So I won't do that now, but I'm just gonna slice it here slowly as if I'm at home with you slicing, okay? So we're just slicing our scallions now maybe i'm not maybe i'm slicing a little faster <laughs> but um i'm not doing the fancy chefy knuckle trick because i want to do it as if i'm doing it with you i love spring onions i think spring onions are so cool because they're a little bit sweeter unless you're using a vidalia onion they're a little bit sweeter and i love the fact that they bring green which is some color to to this recipe here. So I believe that my recipe, we've got half a cup. So let's see what my, my cup is looking like here. Get rid of my seeds that I had from before. And let's check it out. So you're going to want to mix half a cup. Now, this is what I love about cooking. If you have a little more than a half a cup, it's not the end of the world. And if you have a little less than a half a cup, it's also not the end of the world because we're not baking, right? Like I'm not going to suddenly find out that these aren't going to rise or they aren't going to taste good if I throw in a little extra. That's the beauty of cooking versus baking, which is why I hate to bake because <laughs> mm. it's too perfect and it's a science. Okay, so we got everything in here, right? And the last thing that we need to add now is our one cup of breadcrumbs. Uh, I mentioned that you could use panko crumbs or just regular seasoned crumbs or plain crumbs that you may make at home, whatever you're up, up to use. I'm using panko crumbs because I love the crunch that they provide because it's got, you can just see the texture of it. They're just 
so good and they give like that extra crunch to it. So now this is the fun part. Now we just get in and we just mix this up as if it's a crab salad, so to speak, right? Because that's really what we're making now. So you're just gonna slowly mix from the bottom and here's, you're good. You don't have to worry about breaking down your aquafaba anymore because it's already started to mix in. And what you should start to see is as you're incorporating, if you, if you spread your spatula over it, it's kind of like creamy that you can see and it's gonna to hold together to become a crab cake eventually. The reason that we're gonna put this into the freezer is the moisture from this is gonna to start to get into our breadcrumbs and really make them glue together. So that when we go to form these into our crab cakes, they will stick together and when we saute them, they won't come apart. Okay, my mixture looks awesome. I'm like super excited about how this looks. You guys see this? Last thing before we go into the freezer is we have to season. Everything you make, you need to season. You need <clears> layers <throat> of flavor. I, I talk about this all the time with our culinary team. Do not put something out that you're not tasting. I'm just giving this a little bit of kosher salt right now. I probably put in a tablespoon, uh, sorry, a teaspoon or two and mix this up. The one thing about salt that I will caution is you can't take it away. So I'd rather have you season it four times and keep tasting until you get to the point that you like. So one, one of the other things we're gonna do here is we're gonna taste also for the acidity. Because I think it's really great when something has that acidy flavor that the lemon juice is giving it. So we're gonna taste it and see if we have enough lemon in here. So good. I think I, I need to try it. I was gonna offer. Just to be sure. So I'm glad I said that because I think it needs some pepper. So I've got a pepper mill. I'm gonna mm. throw in some fresh ground pepper now. Believe it or not, I buy these for my own for my own home by the case. And I don't work for McCormick's, but I know it sounds so ridiculous, but they're awesome. They're just awesome little pepper mills and you can buy them at any grocery store. And they have three different layers of, um, of the coarseness of the, of the pepper that you can use. And I like it to be a little coarse and they're so easy. I'm right in there. Mine needs a little more salt. Not sure about yours. So I'm gonna add a little, let's do about another teaspoon. And I actually really want some more lemon in mine. Don't you think yeah. you could use some? So another chefy trick, so I don't get any seeds into this mixture. I'm just gonna squeeze the rest of that lemon that I had, that I got my tablespoon out of, into my hand. Because the juice is gonna go through and any seeds that, that are here, any of the lemon pits, are gonna stay in my fingers. So question, if you decide you're not a, Part of Tom fan. Can you jackfruit for this? I, I know have, a lot of people have said jackfruit's like a great vegan alternative. Yeah, I have not made these with jackfruit, but you really could. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's almost yeah. that same texture as like a yep. part of Tom. So let's give it <clears throat> another mix. Okay. Let's see what we think. Jeff, you want to get in there sure. and taste it? I'll try one more time. Mm -hmm. I love it. You get the brightness of the lemon juice. Yeah. So delicious. Mm, I can't wait. Okay, so here's what we're going to do now, everyone. Just spread over the top of yours. Throw a little saran wrap on. I know this is going to take a minute, so we're going to give you a minute to go do this. And throw your mixture into the freezer. Take the whole bowl, put it into the freezer. And we're gonna make some cocktails in a minute. Jeff's, I'm gonna straighten up a little. Jeff's gonna to move to cocktails, give you the time to throw this in the freezer and we'll come back to this in a, in a couple minutes, okay? Thank you. So I am going to, and I'll give you a second before we start making this, but I am gonna go into um, creating two different cocktails today. And we'll do one first, Robin will come back in, she'll form the crab cakes and then we'll do the other one. You can't drink two at the same time or you can. If you want to be, you know, double-handed here, 
Um, but today we're going to do two different cocktails. The first one is one of my favorites. And I like this cocktail any time of year because I love anything with grapefruit. But it's called the French Blonde, which I just love the name to it. And it is um, the story behind this pink grapefruit juice as a good base. Um, it's gin. So gin-based cocktail is the main part of the liquor. Elderflower liqueur, which is kind of that amazing like Saint Germain or Saint Elder, which is that really delicious elder um, liqueur from France. And Lillet, which is, if you're not familiar with Lillet, it is a, um, which is this, it is a white wine aperitif from uh, Bordeaux. And it's delicious alone. You could drink this chilled straight up in a glass, or you can add it to a cocktail. It's kind of this sweet and aromatic wine that you can pair together with a cocktail. I, so I happen to love Lillet with that. Um, and again, I chose Saint Elder. I happen to like it. It's a little less sweet than Saint Germain, but both are really good. So you can go either way with it. Um, and then my favorite all-time gin is Bombay Sapphire, which is clean, it's delicious, it's aromatic. Um, I, I, it's perfect when you're pairing it with other things, so it's not competing with the other flavors. Um, so those are the bases to my cocktail in terms of the liquor that we're gonna use. Um, this is a cocktail that can also be served straight up. So it can be the kind of thing that we make it as a martini and we actually pour it straight up into a martini glass, you know, something like this. Um, it's delicious on the rocks where you could actually put it into a rocks glass over ice, shake it, pour it in, and you have that kind of on the rocks drink. I love anything with ice, and I love having a cocktail that's just filled with lots of cold, cold ice. So that would be my way that I'd want it. Um, there's another version of it before we get into this called a brunch blonde, which I love, which is basically, um, I make the cocktail, and you'll see there's got a lot of frothiness to it. And I almost brulee it. So I take the top of it, it has this frothiness on the top and I'll take it and I'll put some sugar on it and I'll torch it. Now, I don't expect you to have a torch at home, but if you're ever that person that makes a creme brulee or if you have a torch that you do things like a meringue with, um, you can torch the top of the cocktail and you have this like almost sugary brulee topping. And I call it a brunch blonde because I feel like it's a dessert and a cocktail. Um, so let's get started. So the first thing that I would look at is um, whenever I'm making a cocktail. Now for me, I always, I, it's easier for me to use a shaker like this, a glass and a shaker. Um, some people prefer to go the route of a proper shaker like this, which you may have at home. It just may be easier for you if you're not as familiar where you have a top and a bottom, you put the beverage in, you shake it up and you have a top that comes off and you pour. So it's really a personal preference to you. If you're bold enough and you're good with cocktails and you're good with practicing it, try it in a glass like this. Um, the thing that Robin was mentioning for about the aquafaba, which I thought was interesting, and I learned this years ago also, um, a lot of cocktails, if you have like a whiskey sour or a Tom Collins or something like that, a lot of these cocktails are made with the liquor and the juice and whatever you're producing, and we put an egg white into it. And an egg white is that frothiness. It's like imagine the meringue that comes from egg white, that same frothiness that Robin had when she was making that, you know, that base to start with that was going to bind those crab cakes. So... Actually, we use aquafaba too in cocktails a lot, particularly when somebody has a vegan event and I can't use egg in it. I'll use aquafaba as a starting point. Um, and what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna measure out a two ounce pour of it. It literally has, it smells a little bit like a chickpea, but when you add it into a cocktail, you don't really see it. So I have a jigger here, which has a one ounce and a two ounce pour on top. And I'm just gonna pour in, you know, a good, ounce, ounce and a half here of the aquafaba right into my glass. Um, and the same way Robin used a whisk where she was whisking and whisking and whisking, um, I'm gonna do something called a dry shake, which is I'm not even gonna add water or ice or anything like that. And I'm just gonna shake this up. And this is kind of a dry shake. What it's doing is it's basically giving me that kind of frothiness. Um, before I start dealing with kind of diluting it with ice, diluting it with liquor, diluting it with all of that. So we're gonna end up with this really frothy kind of substance that's gonna start out the cocktail. And usually when I make a cocktail, I'm always thinking, um, you wanna start out with your ingredients that are non-alcoholic prior to adding your liquor. So if you decide to change it up or you make a mistake or you confuse things or you know for whatever reason, you're not wasting the liquor if you make a mistake. So again, this is called a dry shake and it's dry because I'm not adding anything to it. I'm just shaking it like this. 
Um, again, I'm about, my arm's about to You're fall off. You're just jealous. You wanted to go to the gym with me. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So you can see I have this frothiness at the bottom here, which is kind of amazing, right? So I've got this. And if you look inside here, you'll see it's literally like meringue. It's almost like thick like meringue here. So that's kind of already going to start out. The, 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 if you see like a Tom Collins or a whiskey sour, you get that frothiness on top. That's what that is. That's the aquafaba. So now I'm going to add my other components to this, which are going to be my grapefruit juice. So freshly squeezed pink grapefruit juice. You can also buy it right from the grocery store. Um, I mean, I don't think anything replaces freshly squeezed anything. So I'm going to do a two ounce, that's a two ounce jigger of grapefruit juice. Then I'm going to go into my, um, my liquor components. I've got gin, which is the base of my drink. Um, there are some people that if you're not a gin drinker and you don't love that flavor, you could sub this out with vodka. Um, and I think you would enjoy it just as well. I love the flavor of the gin as the aromatic to it all, um, which I think really to me is what makes this drink so, so beautiful. The Lillet, again, so good. I mean, again, you can drink this. If you chill this, you can drink this straight up as an aperitif. I'm gonna go in again with about an ounce and a half. And again, I've done this several times. So, um, and this is gonna make enough for one cocktail. So you could do this entire thing, make it in advance, and you could put it into a pitcher. You're not gonna get the frothiness of it if you do that, but you could do this cocktail without that frothy component. The Saint Elder is this elderflower liqueur. It's sweet, it's aromatic, it smells like, I mean, you gotta smell I this. love it. Amazing, right? It's almost like perfume, right? It, it, it smells- like Paris, but it, it, it actually it, tastes good. Right? It, it almost <laughs> smells like it, you're in France. I don't know why, I just love it. Um, and I'm gonna do just a simple one ounce pour, not that much because it's sweet. You don't need to add any kind of sweetness, any simple syrup, any sugar to this. Um, I have to interrupt. I don't yeah. know, Yukon Nation. Maybe we should go to France and we should do this in France. I think it's a good idea. I know, right? Yukon Nation. Anyone don't you want to a, go with us? Uh, don't you have a program abroad that we need to teach people how to make cocktails in I France? Think that would be awfully fun if we did a cooking <laughs> class in France. Yeah, good idea for the next one. Yes. So this is your cocktail. This is how it starts. Now I'm going to add my ice. Now I've waited to the end to add the ice because for me, again, I don't want to dilute this drink down because when I shake it, it's going to really need, I don't want to have this whole thing be a whole cocktail full of ice. Now again, I love ice. So I'm going to take my drink like that, cap it. I'm always filling in the glass first and then I cover it like that. And then I turn it around. And now the shaking, the agitation of the ice in the glass is what's going to really make this amazing. He's only making one drink. I'm making enough for him to try the cat thing. I can make plenty. Uh huh. Okay, so I now I made you a drink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see. Let's do it straight up today. I kind of love it straight up. So here we go. And you're going to see how awesome this is. Uh, it has a, just a light pink color to it. Um, the frothiness is on top there. Perfect. Just like that. I'm going to have pre cut my pink grapefruit just like that. You could use it onto the side. Actually, give you a knife, Roman. Yeah. Um, you could use it onto the side of the glass. You could also do a, um, if you like, that. And there's your cocktail. That's it's gorgeous. absolutely beautiful. It's perfect. I think we're going to just be sure that it's so beautifully good. I'm going to go just, get my, my um, I'm just going to taste it just to be sure. Uh, oh my God, it's amazing. I am uh, transformed to France. I don't uh, believe you. <laughs> I, am I transformed. don't believe you and I need now, to make sure. Yeah, hold on. So if you look at this drink, look how beautiful that is. It's a perfect color. It has this little layer of frothiness on top, which is that aquafaba again. And you won't get that. You won't get it any other way. So that's an amazing way to do it. And that's oh. a yeah, Robin needs to try I it. Do try, need it to try it. I don't believe you. Try this it, is a yes. drink that we can drink all year round. Uh, you can. I said that. I drink it any day. Cheers to I, all of you. Yeah. And to maybe next year going to France with you where we can <laughs> cook together. Come on, Yukon, take us to France. Let's go. <laughs> Yum.
Isn't that so good? That is wonderful. Yeah, and it's yeah. beautiful. I happen to love it in this shape glass too. I know, I feel um, really fancy. It is a coupe glass. <laughs> you, there, you are fancy. This is a very fancy drink, you know? Just call me fancy dancing. <laughs> very fancy pants. Why don't you go now? Now that you've had this, it, first of all, do you have any questions? If you do, I'm happy to kind of answer as we go. Um, but this is just an awesome, awesome drink. I think you'll love it. Um, and again, if you want it and you prefer it on the rocks, it would be awesome in a, in a rocks glass that like that filled with ice. And I would have just taken the whole shaker and poured it right into the glass, right? I didn't even need the, the rest with of the it. With the ice from the shaker? With the ice from the shaker. Yeah. Well, you don't need new ice at that point. That's okay? awesome. Okay, everybody. Enjoy. While he was shaking and, and making that fabulousness, I just ran to my freezer and got my crab mixture. So I'm going to give you a minute to go get yours. Yeah, see, I can I can already tell that this mixture has like started to come together and the moisture has gotten into the breadcrumbs. So we have like a really great consistency here. Everybody have theirs out of the freezer? You're probably still drinking their cocktails. You're drinking your cocktails. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, then I'll give you another minute and I'll have another sip. Mm. Twist my arm. Mm. That's mm. great. Excuse me. That's kind of wonderful. Okay. I am not Julia Child and I barely even drink, so, but I'm enjoying this. So now I need everybody to grab a plate, just a shallow plate. It doesn't have to be anything special because what this is gonna be, or if you rather use like a sheet pan or something, you can do that as well. But this is where we're gonna be putting our breadcrumbs and um, we're gonna lay our breadcrumbs out here because we're now going to crust our crab cakes, okay? Let me first also get my my oven here or my stove top, very fancy. And we're just gonna sprinkle the breadcrumbs onto the plate. No rhyme or reason for this, right? They're just on the plate. It's kind of like, this is the moment where we're gonna start breading. And where is my little sheet pan? I have a little sheet pan. Okay, no problem. We're just gonna, we're just gonna do this here. So, I'm going to suggest that you make the crab cakes about a quarter of a cup in size. If you want to make them a half a cup in size, again, there's no like rules here, but I'm going for a quarter cup. So you're going to take your quarter cup measurer, dig right into your mixture. And now we're going to get dirty, right? And we're going to hit it out onto your sheet pan and it'll come or onto your board. And it's going to come out pretty, pretty nicely because they've been frozen. And now I'm going to start to kind of just make the mixture into the shape of a crab cake. And I'm just going to sit that into the breading and I'm going to work myself through. I don't think we need to make <clears throat> all of these this very moment, but we're not gonna, one of the things that I'll tell you is whenever you're sauteing anything, you never want to overcrowd your, your saute pan, right? Because then it just, it sort of just like uh, blanches in the oil instead of actually sauteing and getting like a crust on the bottom. So why don't we start with four? Cause that's my lucky number. And cause I said so. <laughs> so here we go. I'm on number three of making my mixture into the crab cake. Doesn't this look delicious? Mm. So are these the size you would use for an appetizer or an entree or how do you say um, this? Well, I might for an entree do two of these mm -hmm. and then for an appetizer possibly do one maybe on a salad or you'll see when we, when we do it with the grilled corn salad, it's really gonna be a nice plate. Okay. All right. So I've got my four crab cakes to start here. I'm going to put this aside for a minute. I'm going to just wipe off my hands here. And now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to turn them over so the other side of them gets crusted it's just automatically gonna stick to them. That's the beauty of these. You know, you're not gonna need like an egg wash or anything because obviously we're, we're going vegan here, so there's no eggs involved. But if, if we wanted it crunchier, we could actually take them, form them, don't bread them, freeze them for another 20 minutes so they get like 
like more solid than they are now, dip them in the aquafaba, then in the breadcrumbs and throw them into a deep fryer, which would get like a serious crunch on the outside of these. But we're gonna pan saute these today. So um, I'm just, just giving you different options. Okay? They're probably a little healthier that way. I would well, guess. Uh, for sure they're healthier. <laughs> to this not way. deep fry them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mine have been breaded. Did you do the sides or just the tops? No, I mean, there's going to be some along the sides just because it's sitting in okay. the breadcrumbs and that's mm -hmm. totally fine. But we're really going to go, this is all cooked ingredients, right? So I don't need to worry that I'm not cooking this through um, in terms of having eggs or meat or anything in here. So I'm going to turn on my little stove top on medium heat. So get your, get your oven, your, you know, stove chops. I don't know if you guys are working with gas or electric. You're going to want it on medium. And you're going to put probably say this is three or four teaspoons of oil and we want that to get hot you can start to see it sort of start to smoke you see how it's separating right now that's showing that it's starting to get hot <clears throat> but i don't there's nothing worse than putting something that you want crispy and seared into a into a frying pan of oil that is not hot enough because you'll never get that sear in anything that you cook. So give that a minute. And this way, if you guys need to catch up and catch up with me. So um, I think this is something that could be like a really neat side dish also. You know what I mean? Like as something that you could offer if you are doing Thanksgiving and you wanted to do something interesting, you could make these either really small as an hors d'oeuvre and, and top them with, you could take that vegan mayonnaise and put some capers in it and some fresh tarragon um, or dry tarragon and you make like almost like a remoulade sauce and put that on top with that. Oh my God, that would be so delicious, right? Um, you know, so that could be a little hors d'oeuvre option or it could be just as a side, like as a vegetable, so to speak, with your Thanksgiving, if you're going vegan for Thanksgiving. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little test. And I'm going to take a couple of my breadcrumbs and I'm just going to throw them in. And I'm going to notice that they're barely doing anything. So I want them dancing right now. I want them dancing around in that oil and being happy and showing me that they're ready to get crispy. And they're just starting to, I think I'm going to up my gas a little bit. And I think we're kind of good. Let's go for it, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to and saute our crab cakes. Ah, you hear that sizzle? That's what I want. Yum. I don't, as I said, I'm not gonna overcrowd my frying pan because that's the worst thing you can do. You'll like blanch them and you'll never get any crispiness to them. Yum, they smell so good, right? Thank you. sizzle away for, I don't know, maybe a minute on each side. One thing that I was once taught from um, a chef trainer of mine was that you don't want to touch them. It's like when you're grilling something on your grill at home, you got to leave it until it, it actually gets a sear because it'll actually release. If you are grilling something on your grill and you go and you try to move it and it's still stuck on your grill, it's because you didn't leave it alone enough. It wasn't a hot enough grill and it wasn't, um, and you didn't give it a chance to sear. But so you're gonna to start to see that around the edges, it's gonna get nice and golden brown. And once we start to see that, that's when we're gonna to wanna to turn it over. Mine's looking kind of cool. And they smell so good, yeah, right? <clears throat> Let's take a little peek. Ah, oh, look at this. Is that beautiful? This makes me happy. And look how easy this is. You guys at home, you're all being so chefy. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're gonna give it a couple, like maybe not even another minute. We'll see, because my oil's nice and hot. I don't know about you guys, but we're sizzling away here. And what this is doing, because we have the heat high enough, is it's sizzling on the outside, but the inside is gonna still stay nice and creamy. 
Another tip I will tell you about these is that this is something you can do ahead of time, right? So you're having your dinner party, you're gonna get these seared off, put them onto a sheet pan, which is what I'm gonna be doing right now when they're done. And I can refrigerate it at this point, or I can leave it out if it's only gonna be like an hour or so. And then I would pop them back in the oven, a hot oven that's preheated at about 355 degrees, just to get that crisp on and heat them up inside before I'm ready to serve them. All right, mine are good. I'm taking them off nice and golden brown on both sides. My mouth is totally watering. <laughs> Okay, so now we can set this aside and we're gonna move on to our grilled corn salsa. I think though that you guys need another drink first. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah. I mean, okay, those look great, but they're not quite as great as me making another cocktail. So mm, maybe. I think we should go back to trying a second cocktail tonight, which um, what we're gonna be producing is a pomegranate margarita. And I love a margarita any time of the year, but when I think of the fall, I'm trying to figure out what would be that good flavor that would work well now at this time of year. And pomegranate juice is something that even though you can drink it year round, it sort of feels autumnal. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna make a pomegranate margarita from scratch. A um, few of my ingredients that I'm gonna work with today. Um, I have tequila, silver tequila, which is Casamigos. Um, it's one of my favorite. It's also probably right now, one of the hardest tequilas to get um out there in the market um my distributor just told me recently i ordered a few cases about a week ago and he said to me that they received 300,000 bottles of tequila which for the state of connecticut and they all sold in 18 minutes all of them there was a huge demand for this it's crazy so of course i ended up buying a bunch of cases of it because i figured i just gotta have it right so i'm gonna start with that um, I always like to add an orange, either a triple sec, uh, Grand Marnier, something like that. So I just use every any kind of triple sec. You don't have to get fancy with this. You don't need to deal with like Grand Marnier or, you know, you know, any Cointreau or anything like that. I feel like triple sec, particularly when you're adding a juice to it, if it's not a clean drink, I think it's fine. It also adds a tiny bit of sweetness. So there's that as my second ingredient. Um, palm juice. So palm, palm makes a uh, just straight up pomegranate juice. So I have that um, simple syrup, which is again, equal parts sugar and water. I happen to buy it this way because it comes in squeeze bottles. I use it at my bars, but if you wanna make a proper simple syrup at home, you take equal parts of sugar and water and you boil it until it dissolves the sugar out and you don't have any of the grittiness left. And then you cool it down, you put it in a bottle or a, a container of some sort and you use that as your sweetness for your cocktail. So you've got that. And then fresh lime juice. Question. Which is, yes. Oh. Simple sugar. Yes. How long does that hold in your refrigerator? Well, simple syrup you could make, um, and you could do a few different things with it. Simple syrup will hold for really a few weeks in your fridge. It does turn though. Interestingly enough, it will not stay forever. Um, the one that I buy like this actually is shelf stable. I'm not sure what they add to it that makes it that way, but it's easier for me. It's the same components and it's shelf stable. Um, if you want to do, if I was doing a large batch of it, then I would just make it myself. Um, the other really cool thing about simple syrup that can flavor a drink is you can add anything to it and make it aromatic. So you could add rosemary, you could add cinnamon sticks, you could add whatever it is, and you're infusing flavors into the sugar and the water. So um, that's just another component that you can play with. So let's get started. First of all, going back to that whole concept of having all of your non-alcoholic ingredients first, I am gonna start with my lime juice, which every margarita needs fresh lime juice. So for me, like, and again, going to a single uh, margarita, every margarita that I do has half of a fresh lime. So I'm just gonna cut it in half. You can either juice it in advance, or you could take a fork like I do, like that, and just kind of twist it, twist it around. And actually, let me just do this in case these bottles are blocking you. So I'm going to twist out. I'm going to get the juice of this half of a lime, which is always really a nice way to start with a fresh margarita is getting that lime juice. I also then take this and scrape off the 
pulp of the juice because I love that and I think it adds so much flavor to it. Um, and kind of a little bit of texture. Okay, so there's my initial start. So I've got my lime juice. Then I'm gonna take my pomegranate juice. Now, depending on how sweet you want this and how dark you want this, um, I would say you're gonna probably add around an ounce, ounce and a half of pomegranate juice to this. And you could do that. You don't have to really over measure it. I mean, I find that a lot of people now are wanting skinny drinks. And everyone, ever, ever since Bethany created the skinny margarita, everybody wants straight up tequila with fresh lime juice and call it a day. And they don't want sweetness. So, um, you know, I caution you to overdo it on the juice side of it when you're making a margarita. I happen to love it and I'm fine with it if it's sweet. Frankly, on a, a margarita, I'm fine with it being sweet. Um, so that's kind of my next sort of best ingredient there. Then I'm going to go to my liquor. So my tequila, and again, I don't need to um, worry about this. I'm going to do two ounces of tequila. And again, when you're doing a drink like this, you don't need to go crazy and get like the super expensive. I mean, I know Casamigos is not like the inexpensive version, but you don't need Reposado. You don't need Añejo. You don't need the higher end tequila because when you're mixing it with lime juice and other juices, it's like having Dom Perignon as a screwdriver and you're mixing it as a uh, mimosa, sorry. And you're mixing in juice to like super high end stuff. You don't need it. So, you know, I would just do my tequila like that, pour it in my triple sec or my Cointro in this case. I would say, you know, again, some people, again, to taste that don't love it as much, but I'm going to do an ounce. Okay. I got my ounce of that. And then my simple syrup, which again, this is nice and easy because it comes in this bottle like this, squeeze bottle. I'm going to just add about an ounce as well of that just for the sweetness to it. And there you go. So I've got all those ingredients in there. So I've got my base of my cocktail here. I'm gonna now take my ice. Now, so I've kind of filled my glass like this. One thing that you do when I always think about when I'm doing a drink, and you know, I don't mind having the ice from the shaker, but a lot of people, if you go to a bar and you're getting a high-end experience and you're gonna do a drink on ice, you'll take the drink and put, Put some clean ice into this, you know, just so you start with not, not a diluted. So here's my clean glass of ice. I've got my drink. I'm gonna cap it up like that. And then I'm gonna shake it up. I'm gonna go back to the shaking game. Back to working out. Shake it up for like a good 15, 20 seconds. I know you love this. <laughs> All right. Again, it got some of that frothiness to it. Now I'm going to strain it just over my clean ice like that. So you can kind of see, again, beautiful color. Okay. And you can either... Some people will take a lime and float it on top. Some people will do a lime wedge, you know, like that kind of like what I did there. So whatever your preference is, you can do, um, but that's kind of your cocktail. So there you go. There's your pomegranate margarita. Yum. Yeah. I think you want to try it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't need, it. I don't need the lime in my face. Though. Okay. There you go. You don't have to have it in your face. Here I am. Yeah. See if you approve. Cheers, everybody. See if you approve. I got to taste a little bit more, but it's so delicious. Okay. This is my drink. I like it. It's good, right? It's so, so good. good. Yeah. It doesn't taste naughty and like filled with tequila, but you know that this Oh, it's is, there. You can only have one of these. <laughs> it's there. Now, one other thing that we've been doing a lot of times with, with um, margaritas, That's and good. it's super popular right now, is people are enjoying mezcal, which is kind of like a smokier um, version of tequila. And same, it's also made from agave and it adds a whole different dimension. So if you decide you want to mix it up and do kind of half tequila, half mezcal, that is a nice way to change things up. Um, so anyway, enjoy that and over to you. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna be moving on here with our grilled corn salad. 
This is one of my favorite things. We do this so that you could actually serve it just as is, but with the crab cake, it's kind of amazing. And there's so many different things we can do. So everybody grab all of your ingredients for the corn salad, please. Um, we're gonna begin with the corn. So that should be on your cutting board first. And I asked you to have a medium sized bowl. So if you happen to have a wide rim bowl, much like I have here, I recommend it. And I'll show you why in a sec. So everybody grab their ingredients, please. And you're gonna grab um, a nice sharp knife. Okay. I understand that some people couldn't get fresh corn. And we had this conversation that you could also go to Trader Joe's and buy, they have like a roasted corn that's a frozen product, which is, which is fine. And it would be great also. Obviously it's not gonna have the same flavors, but you know what? If you've never had this, you wouldn't know any different. So for those of you that are not cutting or slicing and dicing with me, bear with us, please. Um, you're gonna wanna just, figure to put yours in a bowl and let it hang out in a bowl for a minute. Okay, so I grilled my corn on the cob, got it right here. And what I recommend is to have a shallow bowl that you can get into and to actually cut in the bowl only because it doesn't make as much of a mess. But let's assume you don't have a shallow bowl and I will, I will do what you are all doing. And we're gonna go right onto here and you're gonna to wanna to watch your hands and use the tip of the knife. So there's no way that it's out here to slip anywhere, okay? And you're just gonna slice down. And I always like have this little like game with myself to see how big the pieces are that I can get off of the piece of corn, but it's just my own thing. Not, <laughs> I'm just telling you. Fight <laughs> with corn. Uh. <laughs> Did you brush that in anything? Olive oil, butter? Uh, I did. did. <laughs> I am speechless, which is not often. Um, I brushed it with olive oil and I kissed it to a very hot grill yeah. because I don't want to sear this too much. I just want some of the, the, the kernels to, to turn black so that it has like a charred flavor to it. It just ups the, the flavor profile here. Yeah. So mm -hmm, I don't know how big your pieces are going to be if you try to cut Jeffrey, but we're not in a competition. It's only my own little personal thing. Should I do the other one and show you? So yes, let's yeah. go for it. You can try. You continue and I'll cut larger pieces. Okay, go ahead. Here you go. <laughs> this is like the thing, like I may like totally sneak a little piece like this because it tastes so good. Mm. I love it. That's a pretty big piece. Mm -hmm. Okay, show off. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So I have one whole side of a piece you, of corn. Do you happen I guess to I won notice that, one, that huh? we're siblings and we may compete <laughs> on occasion? Mm -hmm. Let's try that again. Go I'm on. Not, I'm not trying to up his game with the drink profile here, but now, that you, now there's a Mine are not on the floor, like half of his, but <laughs> okay, again. great. Good job. Shockingly again, I, I have a whole side of one piece of corn. You are not having as much fun cutting your <laughs> corn in your kitchen right now, but I'm sure that you're moving a lot faster than we are. You can go on. Mm -hmm. I'm just well, going to continue I'm just waiting because I need to oh. get the corn, please. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, go. Okay, so I want to show you something. Let me just grab this. So average, we're just talking an average corn on the cob. I've got two cobs. On average, with the big pieces that I told you about, we're talking about about two cups of corn, okay? just so you know, which is like just a little scientific thing. The magic of television. <laughs> my other 10 corn cobs just happened to show up like this because one of my guys in my kitchen misread my instructions. So things happen. Um, so I'm gonna give you guys some time to get to the point that I'm at. But this right here is now 12 cobs of corn. Okay. But this is the recipe for how many though? Well, a lot of corn salad. it's a lot of corn salad. Um, it, it, because it could also be served as the salad. You know, you could okay. cut this in half and only do it for six. This is the kind of thing that you can put in your refrigerator. You could have it for like five days and just eat it and enjoy it. It's really amazing. You could make a frittata 
sorry, I know that's not vegan, but I'm just throwing an idea <laughs> out there to you. Um, or eat it with a little bit of salsa, which is kind of delicious too. Um, so much you could do with this. And you could make it into a salsa on a salad, et cetera. So keep slicing and dicing. I'm going to keep moving. Um, so now I have my corn and it's irresistible and I almost want to eat another piece, but I won't. Um, and we're going to next go to our onion. So we have a red onion. Let me move this aside. I've peeled the red onion, I asked you to as well, and we're gonna need a half a cup of diced red onion. I'm just gonna cut off the end. Robin, real and quick, how many cups of corn uh, kernels for the whole recipe? Well, this is 12 cups because, I mean, I basically got a almost a cup out of each. It, okay. it, Trust me when I tell you, if you have six cups and we make this recipe, it's still going to be delicious with even the same amount of ingredients that I'm telling you. It's one of those recipes that is, it doesn't matter that it's exact. I, and I know that sounds so random. What's most important is that we season it well. It has plenty of citrus, which we're going to get to in a minute with the lime juice and the lime zest. So um, if you want to only do six corns, just do six right now. Totally fine. But you want the measurement of, you know, if you're going to want some leftovers, a good like six cups would be good. Would you say two cobs is about one cup? Two cobs, a cob is one cup about. One cup is one cup. But it's a loose cup, right? Yeah. Like you saw how my pieces were kind of big because like if I went in here right now, where's my one cup measure here? If I went in here and I took just the pieces that didn't have um, the large pieces in it, it's a lot more dense. And this is probably two cobs at that point. But I was really measuring with pieces that looked like this. Again, this is one of those things. It's not that exacting and it doesn't really matter. Trust me when I tell you when we're done with this, you're going to you're going to see what I mean. I promise. OK, so you're going to slice your onion in half because I want to show you the way to be make sure that you're doing things stably so you can't cut yourself, particularly if you're using sharp knives, which I hope you are. This is my favorite knife. This is a chef's knife. It is super safe. It is incredibly sharp. It could cut my hand off, but it's not going to because I know how to safely use it. So when I slice an onion, this is my the way that I like to slice it. Everybody does it differently. You'll see people doing it different ways on television. Um, I like to cut it in half and then slice it Slice right down like this. So what I've got are half moons, right? And then I spin them. See that? Did you catch that? Spin them. And I give it another. This is going to give me a nice, even dice. Because I spun them and they already have like those... layers so it almost makes it easier it's like a cheat i want all of my onions to be pretty much the safe same size okay mine's a crier i don't know about you guys but i'm going to try not to cry for you um whew. getting it nope i'm, I'm looking away oh my goodness <laughs> don't cry for me argentina okay um <laughs> So we're going to do a half a cup without the tears of red <laughs> onion. <laughs> One teaspoon of <laughs> yeah, and a teaspoon of tears, which is for salty goodness. Okay, so there you go. Half a cup. Now, I probably have another quarter cup here. And as I said, because I feel like it, I'm adding it. It's just going to make it delicious and good. Okay. Now. Whew move that away. Cheapers. All right, now we've got our red onion. So when I when I clean a red onion, obviously I washed and dried it like I asked you to. I slice it in half. Some of my chefs be still me now because I don't like to waste food. We'll just cut the end off that has the green and they waste a lot of this. That's a lot of food waste and people are starving. I'm really against that. So I like to just slice right in here. I pull out the tip, the, you know, the top of the pepper, the green, and I'm left with this beautiful piece of red pepper. 
We'll do the same thing to this side. So this one has more of the membrane in it. So again, I'm gonna slice down around the top of the green. Watch me, just pull it out and then just take the membrane, which is totally fine, but sometimes it's a little bitter. So I like to get it out. Get rid of your seeds. So we don't need those. And here's your pepper. Now I'll let you cut the ends off, which we're still gonna use. But what this does is it gives you a stable, straight piece, right? So we're gonna, I'm crying still. So we're gonna slice this down into straight, easy to dice because I'm trying to make your lives easier. Now they're all the same size, right? And again, I do that little spin thing to make my life easier. Hold them carefully and here we go. And I have a really nice dice of the red pepper. I'm gonna do the other side. Again, I'm gonna just get rid of some of these membranes. I don't know if any of you are crying. I'm literally crying from that onion. Okay. Again, I'm getting my stocks here. Any questions, anybody? Am I going too fast? Are we making lime, are we using lime juice for this? We are. Should I start making lime juice? Well, the only reason I, I don't know if you should is because we'll get ahead of them. Oh, okay. So here we go. I like to deal with limes. Okay, I'll let you do that lime part when we get to the lime, which I promise will be next. Okay, so now I've diced almost the entire pepper. And that part made it so much easier because it was stable and it was flat. Now I've got these like little curly ends here. I'm gonna turn them over again, just trying to find ways to create stability for you. I would just take it and just eat it. <laughs> <laughs> or, or that. So much easier to just eat it. Now I'm just giving you a quick or as Jeffrey said, just eat it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you're gonna just give a, a chop to this. There's a lot of chopping. A lot of uh, slicing and dicing, uh, chopping. Slicing and dicing for this. Wait till you taste this though, you're gonna, you're gonna thank me for that. Okay. I'm gonna let Jeffrey who is desperate to touch my limes, to, to, to zest and, and juice the limes. So now we need the two limes that I asked you to wash and dry. So they're here. Um, I'm sure Jeff will tell you, you always wanna zest them first because once you squeeze the juice out of it, it's really hard to have this on top and be stable. So we're gonna zest about a tablespoon, I think. No, a teaspoon. I See this recipe, I would do a tablespoon because I love the flavor. So that's going to be about so this, one. This zester is great. You can buy these at most um, kitchen stores, William Sonoma, Bed and Bath. Um, if you don't want it, if you're not as comfortable like this, you can just put it on your board and just do like this. So you don't like slip and miss and all of a sudden like plan your hand off. Can I show you one other thing? Sure. This is another thing. I like to put it on top of something like this mm -hmm. and go like this. Or you can do it that way. This way, it's a lot. <laughs> That's it's why a, she's the chef. It's a lot. <laughs> I don't even do that at home. I didn't know that trick. It's a lot faster. Trust me. Okay. It doesn't look quite as good as the way I was doing it. Though. Okay, whatever. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Now, now give them the juice. Yep. Yes. So again, if you don't have a stick of fork, juice right in. Best part about limes is no pits, no seeds. And the smell, it's so delicious and bright. So this is gonna give that bright flavor, that citrusy delicious flavor to this, to this salad or salsa, however we wanna look at it. It's amazing. Um, and just to lime, make right? sure the juice of one lime, please. Um, just, just to make, no, sorry, the juice of two limes. Okay. 
just to make sure that we're on time here, I'm going to start while he's zesting. I'm going to start slicing up my scallions. And much like I explained to you, I need me to cut that for mm -hmm. you. Did you notice the trick that he's using with the fork? Please show so them that. So much easier than any kind of kind of juice press or anything like this. You basically Look at how it really take gets the in fork there. and you go in like this and you just twist it. You just twist the fork. You don't even have to squeeze. You're just twisting it and you're breaking apart all of the different sections of the lime. And it's really, it does the work for you, the fork. Um, and then you just squeeze it and go like that. And then you take the end and all of that pulp and just drag it right down there. So this is what I do for, for cocktails. Okay, so while he's juicing, I'm just slicing up our scallions in an effort to move us along because I think we may be a little over time and I don't want to take advantage of, of your time. And I'm sure you need your night to go and enjoy and eat this. So I just sliced up six scallions, which we're going to add in now. I'm going to let Jeffrey even stir this. A spoon. Uh, I could, we can use a large spatula we had. I'll get that for you. Okay. <clears throat> While he's stirring that, I'm going to hit it with some kosher salt because again, we want to season everything. I'm doing about probably a tablespoon to start. I'm going to hit it with some fresh pepper. You can stir while I'm peppering. And then my absolute favorite part of this, and, and I know I have a lot of clients that hate this, this herb, but I love cilantro. Much like I showed you with the parsley, I washed it, I dried it, put it in some saran wrap, and look at how beautiful and fresh this still looks. We're going to take half of this bunch of cilantro. Okay. And what we're going to do with this is I'm not going to be so fussy because now we're going into a salsa slash salad here. And so I really just want to get all of my greens chopped. If I get a little of the stems in, I'm totally cool with that. So I'm just going to give this a rough chop between the lemon and the cilantro. I don't know which I like better. The flavors that this is going to bring to the salad is so awesome. Okay, so here we go. Even my cameraman just said, oh, it smells so good. <laughs> it's, it's true. There's that just wonderful smell when you smell cilantro. Now, again, if you're not a fan of cilantro, so use parsley. It doesn't matter. But I do recommend using Italian parsley versus the curly parsley. I think it has a better flavor. Okay, we are gonna throw this into our salad. Make sure we get it all because there's too much goodness on my cutting board. And then we're talking about a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. I use extra virgin olive oil when I make salads, when I make dressings, and when I want to finish something, I do not use it to cook with in a saute pan because it cooks off and you're wasting all the goodness. I would use it, uh, olive oil, uh, just a virgin olive oil, but not like a really expensive extra virgin. So we're going for about a quarter of a cup here. That should do it. I'm going to hit it with some more pepper. Again, this is to taste, right? So like I said to you, if you're not a pepper person, don't put the pepper in. We're going to just give it a taste. I have a fork for you too. Do you ever do any vinegar or any, uh, or is the lime do The that? lime is what you, you know, the lime's giving you that citrusy, um, okay. vinegary taste. But you certainly could put a little red wine vinegar in, which would give it that like pickled flavor if you want. Yeah. So good. Mm -hmm. I want mean, more salt. I think it's great. And I don't. I want to add a little more salt. Okay. You win. <laughs> yep. It's not a drink. Mm -hmm. It's mine. It's my recipe. Mm. Okay. Ultimately, it's to taste, right? So if you think it's perfect for you, give it the way you like. Okay. Let me get rid of my mess here. So I really can show you how pretty this is going to look. Thank you, Jen. One more time to make sure that salt. 
Okay, now, in an effort for saving time here, obviously I haven't had a chance to reheat these, but let's just pretend that I did. Actually, they're still warm. I'm gonna put two on the plate. Take some of my delicious corn salad and put it around on the sides. And some of the big pieces that we were teasing about that I did, I just love to have those in. So it shows, for those of you that did actually get your corn on the cob, shows that it's really like freshly, freshly grilled. They hit it with a little more <clears throat> pepper, just a teeny little seasoning of salt. Hit it just real quick. And then to garnish, we're gonna go with some little microgreens. I did not tell you to get microgreens, but these are something you could buy at any Whole Foods. They sell them. I believe they actually now started to carry them at Trader Joe's, but you just wanna give it just a little pretty topping for the presentation. And there you go. Wanna taste? I do. Let's dig in. Can't wait. Look at how creamy yeah, they are. They're crunchy, pretty creamy. I, like I know, but the, you can tell they're crunchy yeah. and creamy. Mm. So yummy. I can't wait for you to taste yours. Oh my God. Mm. So good. I bet you guys can't wait to try it either. So <laughs> delicious and so wonderful. And I can't even believe it's vegan because it actually thinks, I, I feel like I'm eating a crab cake, right? Yeah, I think I need a margarita to go with that. <laughs> okay. And let me cheers this. Here, cheers. Yeah. John. Cheers, Yukon Nation. I'm thankful that we're here. I'm grateful that we're a part of this. And I hope you have a wonderful, happy holiday um, for you and all of your families. And let's go to France. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. And do we have any closing questions? We do not. Thank you all so much. And looks delicious. And I'm uh, <laughs> looking forward to hearing the responses. Um, as a reminder, we have recorded this session. So we will be sending out um, the recording um, so that you can um, watch it again if you didn't cook along tonight or if you want to make it again. So, and Maggie, did we provide you with the recipes? Because I want to, uh, we will be sharing those as well. Yes. Wonderful. Okay. And um, I'll say one last thing. If anybody has any questions, um, you can send us an email. My email is robin at marciaselden.com and Jeffrey's is Jeffrey at marciaselden.com. I think they're putting it in the chat box for you. Um, and if you want to be inspired and see some exciting parties, check us out on Instagram at Marcia Selden Catering because we have some pretty special parties that we show. And also check out our Naked Fig for this vegan look. Oh, I need another bite. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. So good.